Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, today I want to share some things with you. I call it um, belief. Now, I discovered. Hmm, please, I need, I need a pen. Where's my pen? Get me. I need to show you some things. For this pastor? Yes. Get me a pen. Okay. I want to show you something. I discovered okay. that uh, recently there are things that God wants the church to know. Unfortunately, we know so much. But we don't need so much. What we need are just a few things we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks. It will help your spiritual life so powerfully. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to show you a few things. I know that, uh, let me ask you a question. When you talk about believers and unbelievers, where can we find believers? Where? Praise God. Where can we find unbelievers? In the no, so it's fine. That's the way she understands it. But I'm going to show you that these are part of the errors that has been planted into the minds of an average Christian. Most people think that those people who are outside are unbelievers. And most people think that those who are in church are the believers. Come on, tell somebody, stop deceiving, stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. So when you see somebody who doesn't come to church, he's an unbeliever. When you see somebody who does not follow Jesus, who does not carry Bible, he's an unbeliever. But you that come to church, you are a believer. Man. You are a believer. Supposed to. Okay. We'll go and check these things. And then we want to find out who are the true believers. What? He said if you receive Jesus, he's supposed to be. We'll go there. You know, that is your opinion. Is that not true? Most most people. It's okay. We both got you. You are you are good. Thank you. All right. Most people think. Now let me show you to just quick, quickly. I'm going to write some things and I want you to tell me which one is more important. <coughs> okay, look at this. The right, see, that's right. Can Pastor, I said the right one. <laughs> can you see? Pastor, red. Ah, yeah, you're not showing your. Pastor, I said the red one. Please, you sit down. It is still part of the law. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> when people when people condemn you, you show law. You don't try to defend yourself. Okay. Let me tell you, I'm going to show you the concept of law. Most people, the problem with many people is you are trying to be right. I'm the right one. You are the wrong one. Yeah. It's not about who is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's about law. You understand it? Amen. Don't worry. When we next week, you will get it. <laughs> and you don't have to be right. Most people are trying to be right. I'm right, you are wrong. I'm right, you are wrong. You're going to create more tension. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see this one. This is a very popular word in the body of Christ. How many of us know sin? <laughs> How many of you know sin? Know you know it. Mm. Praise God. You know How many of you know this word? How many of you know this word? Righteousness. Righteousness. Said they can't see. Oh, she make it bigger. Yeah. Oh, the cameraman. Okay. Holiness. Justification. Just watch what I'm saying. Justification. These are most of the words that we deal with as Christians. Sanctification. Repentance. 
forgiveness. Condemnation. Any other word you can remember? Purification. Eh? Purification. Redemption. Redemption. Another one? Let's let's think of think of words that we've been we've used so well. Judgment. Thank you, sir. Judgment. Salvation. 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 What do you call corrupt? Corruption. Corruption. Deliverance. Deliverance. Any other word you have heard in the body of Christ? Yeah. Hypocrisy. I just call it hypopotamus. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Uh, okay. Hypocrisy. Which other word? Wisdom. Wisdom. Liberty. 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 Victory. Victory. You see? These are words, eh? Temptation. Temptation. Knowledge. Submission. 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 Sacrifice. Knowledge. Understanding. Understanding. Sacrifice. Commandments. Commandments. Now, do you see how big these words are? We can continue. Do you know we can continue writing? Maybe we cannot. We will not finish in the next one. Yes. Now, this is, or these are the words that the believers in the church they play with. This is who oh, sin. That guy is a sinner. That guy is unrighteous. That guy is not doing something right. And this one. Brings condemnation, judgment, you start judging people, you start, you know, all these ones are good if you keep them. Is that true? But you know, there are two words that you did not, maybe some of us will have put faith. You forgot to put faith. Okay? Okay? Now, faith. But do you know there's a word I'm looking for? That every one of us missed. It's called belief. Okay, we're going to just look into this word, belief. I discover that most people who follow Jesus have all these things. This is the only thing. That they're struggling with. Everybody that Jesus met with sickness, with problem, did he ever tell them that before I healed you, you must be righteous? Did he say you must be holy? Did he say you must leave your sins? Did he say all these things? He never. The only one thing he kept asking them is, Do you believe? Do you believe? He kept asking each one of them. It's all. Oh, he didn't say, "Oh, is that thing? You need to be sanctified. You need to be justified. You need to be to repent. You need to repent. You need this. You need that." The first thing is, do you believe? Hallelujah. Amen. I will tell you one thing. Do you know that the Pharisees have the Bible in their hand? You know, Deacon S.P. was teaching us about fasting today. The Pharisees fast seven times a week. And the Pharisees also pray seven times a week. But unfortunately, the people that believed Jesus were not people from the church. The people that disbelieved him most were those within the church, synagogue. Let me ask you before your question. The fact the, the centurion which 
which church did he go to? The woman with the issues of blood, which church did he go to? None of them. Well, it was not about church. It was about their hearts. Believe in their hearts. Many people are Christians today. They do not understand these concepts with God. If you don't believe, if you don't believe, uh, forget about all these things. Though they are good, they are right, but there could be a lot of issues and complications in one's Christian life. I'll show you the power of belief. <coughs> then you have a question. Yeah, but what you're saying, Pastor, can be frustrating, actually, because talk of a centurion is not in church. Talk of centurion. centurion. It's a great faith. Yeah. Yes, Peter only with little faith in church. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, I think where the centurion is, Jesus is finishing, he say, um, that uh, I tell you that day, the children of God will be outside. Will be outside, will be cast out. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I don't know if I'm questioning God and I'm questioning the whole situation. So, why are we coming in to come and be frustrated not to believe? No, because. because it seems like when we're outside, we were not, we were believing I'll, because I'll, we were I'll, sinners. I'll show you. I'll show you. Now coming in, we are frustrated. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I get you. I get are you. We, no, what I have to know is it that. It's like, it sounds like that um, you that are in now here, now out for you. No, you. it is because, I'll tell you, Jesus, don't, don't worry. Outside they'll be taken, be staying. Don't worry. You know, sometimes when you read it, they think it's like, don't worry. I got your question. I said, true. Take it easy, take it easy. I don't worry. Don't worry. When you talk small, wait. So I can give you an answer. Because you talk, 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 time will go. We won't be able to say much. Okay, this is the thing. When you see, don't forget that. How would they know except they are taught? There are pastors here, two pastors came to me yesterday. I think Sister Ije was here, you were here too. Mm -hmm. And you see, one day I was explaining to them, Sister Ije, you remember, I was explaining to them, they were asking me similar questions. Why is it that the church probably are going in the church? You see what I told them? Mm -hmm. In the church, this is what happens. You have Somebody who is in, say, primary two, is in primary two. Sister Etel is in form five, the fifth year. Uh, Brother Endurance is in university, doing first degree. Sister Suzette is doing a PhD. Now, see the problem with the church. I stand here, I want to teach all the students in my class. And then I'm using the same method that I'm going to use to teach a PhD to teach everybody. Am I, going to, am I not going to frustrate them? Am I not going to confuse them? That is a problem with the church. The church, most people do not understand that the way to have an elder church is not in numbers. When you have 12 people you can teach them, but you have 1,000 people, can you teach them? It becomes a problem. Now, unfortunately, the church has not been teaching people. We have been preaching to people. Do you understand? Jesus said in Matthew 29, verse 18, he said, go here unto the world and preach the gospel. Or verse 20, just 20, yeah, 20 to 29, verse 18. He said, Go ahead and preach the gospel. The first thing he told them was to go and preach. In the book of um, uh, Mark, chapter 16, from verse 15, he said, Go into the world and teach. Preach, teach, and then in the Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, you shall be my witness. So you preach, you teach, and then you witness. But what the church has concentrated on has been preaching. When you preach, you can't teach anybody anything. It's like you are, you are pouring water on everybody. You can't do that. That's why God understands that principle. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant within my church a five-fold ministry. So that when the pastor who pastors over the church in this church,
church, it will have first apostle, it will have the prophets, it will have the evangelists, it will have the teachers. A pastor cannot do the work of a teacher. A pastor cannot do the work of a prophet. So in that church, all the five four will work together. And then that is what that was why at some point you see we chose some people. We said, let us have mentors. You remember, I chose few people. I said, I want you to mentor some people. How many people followed it? Those will have been your teachers. Those will have been your teachers. Those will have been those will have helped you to take it from A to B. People came from different places. All of us in this church, we did not start your Christian life from this church. You had gone from one church to the other as you grew up. Is that not true? Most of the things you know or you are, you, your mindset were things that have been programmed into your mind without a the teacher. There was no teacher to teach you all these things. So what happened was that you were taught some things and you ran with what you were taught. And then you came to me. God brought you to me. And then I discovered, wow, I need to now start doing more work than just preaching. I need to start now teaching A, B, C. And that was the purpose why we have, we started uh, uh, Bible class, we started, uh, so you will notice that in this church, before we used to do miracle service, we stopped it. Before we used to do uh, deliver service, we stopped it because we wanted to concentrate mainly on the world. So that people can grow. You see how painful it is when you meet people who have gone to church for 20 years and they are still babies. Is that not painful? They don't know right from left. That's painful. So in a way, some people are playing tricks on people's brain and wasting people's time. And, but we don't want that to happen anymore. So that's why you find the kind of question you are asking. I understand how painful that is. But you see, the way God does it is this. You, you can have great faith outside. You can have great belief outside. But you see the faith that the centurion had. The disciples of Jesus, when they were with him, did not even have it. Is that not true? But after the Holy Ghost came upon them, the faith they had was not greater. Praise God. I'm going to show you the difference between this, uh, uh, this device. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Now, many people read the Bible, they are looking to be righteous. They are looking to be holy. They are looking to be justified. They are looking to be sanctified. But deep in their head, let me finish, because when you keep asking the question, just write your question down. We'll go over it, don't worry. So, everybody have got a master of this. You, you mastered all this, but believe. Now, let me show you something in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Go to Genesis 15, verse 6. <coughs> And he believed in the Lord, and he, and he counted in it to him for righteousness. Praise God. Praise what? God. God. All right, do you, did you hear what they said? What they can say? And Abraham believed God. Now, the Bible said Abraham lived without sin. No. On what premise was Abraham justified? Because he believed. Now, that is all that God wants you and I to grab this morning. Your belief, your believing in God with the whole of your heart, with the whole of your soul, with the whole of your mind can change something for you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham believed God and he became righteous. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to tell your neighbor, believe God. Yeah. Believe God. Yeah. Tell them again, you better believe God. Yeah. Make sure you are believing God. Yeah. Believe God. Yeah. Believe God. Yeah. Like the Americans we say, <laughs> believe in God. Amen. Praise God. Now let me show you. This is we started from where? Genesis. 
15 verse 6. Go with me to the book of Numbers. Numbers 14. You can start from maybe verse 9. Okay. I want to show you this. 14, 9. Yes, sir. Numbers. From 9. Yes, Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Okay. Neither fear ye the people of the land. Okay. For they are bread for us. Mm -hmm. Their defense is departed from them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Amen. 10. But all the congregation bent stone them mm -hmm. with stones. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle. Now the see, thank you. Thank you, sir. That is, I want you to underline that word. The glory of God appeared. Now see what the glory tries to say. Go on, sir. Of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. 12. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. I will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou brottest up these people in thy, in thy might from among them. Praise God. Yes. Sir, Dickie, let me just, did you get anything from what you just read? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. What did you get? Anybody? Unbelief. And what did God say I would do with them? They will not partake. And do you see, do you see what God said? He said, each time these guys are disbelieving me, they are provoking me. They are provoking me. <coughs> then he now went further. He said, if I had not done anything in their life or any miracle that they have seen before, it would have been better. Yes. With all the tests, with all the miracles, you are still doubting me you are still disbelieving me with all that I've done for you. If I've not done it for you directly, I've done it for somebody sitting beside you. And you are still doubting me. You know how painful it is sometimes when you believe, when somebody, you believe somebody believes you. You feel happy, is that not true? How would you feel if you find out that the person never believed you? That exactly it is, it is the way it is. When you pick the word of God and you don't believe what he has said. Amen. You so much damage his heart, you provoke him to anger. And God is saying, I will cut them off. I will disconnect myself from them. Not because of their sins, not because of their mistakes or their errors. I'm not disconnecting myself because of any mess they messed. I'm only going to disconnect myself from them because they choose not to believe me. You might be going to church, you might be pastoring over a church, you may never believe God. You may what? Never believe God. You may never, you may never, I'm telling you. I'm going to show you, you see, there's a guy that believed Jesus Christ. He believed but he was asking Jesus, please help my unbelief. I want when we come to that, I will show you what it means. How can somebody say I believe but help my unbelief? How can you believe and unbelief at the same time? <laughs> yeah, we come, we come to that. Because it's so important for you to have a grab of what we're saying. Once you have a grasp of it, then you will start to fly in God. Right, go with me to the book of um, uh, Mark. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, I read, maybe from chapter 5. From chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Chapter 5. Yes, sir. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Thy troublest thou the master any further. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he 
said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Okay, let's underline only. Believe. Come on, tell yourself, I only have to believe. I only have to believe. I only have to believe. Say, so don't be troubled. Don't look at the problem. Only believe. Only. That's all. Only. I'm not asking more. I'm not asking you to be so to, 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 to be on fire. I'm not asking you to have read Genesis to Revelation. I'm not telling you to, to, to wear to, to walk without food. You know some Christians. <laughs> some Christians will say, I just want to be holy this week. I want to go on the mountain. And I'll be on the mountain. I don't want to have any food. And when they are coming from the mountain, no shoe. They are wearing maybe just like rag. And they feel so holy. They are walking as they, there's no priest shaking them, but they are shaking the priest. They are shaking the priest. Priest is not shaking them. They walk. So what? So with some sort of honor that's not there. Because the honest truth is this. God is not asking anything from you for miracles to start. He said, like only believe. Only what? Believe. Come and say to yourself, I will believe. I will believe. I will believe. I will believe. Only believe. Every other thing, once you have believed, other things can come. Don't forget that it was this belief that brought righteousness to Abraham. So belief can bring other things to you. But only believe. Praise God. Go, sir. Okay. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said unto them, Why make ye this idol and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Hallelujah. This was somebody that they thought was dead. They were troubled. But what woke that guy up? Was it the faith of Jesus? It was not the faith of Jesus. It was the belief. Only belief. I, I told you last time, everybody Jesus healed. When he comes close to people, the first thing he asked them, do you believe I can do this? And they say, yes, we believe we can do it. He said, die. Faith has made the whole. So meaning that I'm not going to use mine. I'm going to use what you have. There's faith in you. But imagine if there was fear in you. What would Jesus use? Imagine if you did not believe what will he use? I'm not using mine. I'm using what you got. When the woman with the issues of blood touched him, when he turned back, what is that woman? Woman, great is your faith. Not mine. I'm not going to heal anybody with mine. It's yours. All I need to do is to spark what you've got. I spark the fire in you. And the faith will start to work. And the miracles will happen. But imagine if you don't have any. What can the master do? The Bible said Jesus got to a city and he could not heal a single person in that whole city. Why? Because the Bible said because of their unbelief. If you don't have belief, if your belief is not true, you get nothing. If you like sleep in the church, Monday to Sunday. <laughs> if you like sleep, roll. Some people roll. They roll. They say the church is not clean. Let's use our body to clean the church. Clean it. Clean it well. You get nothing. But if you don't, if you have faith in God, if you have believed in God, if it's in you, then to walk out. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Let's check Mark 9. We're going to dwell a bit in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark. Jesus said unto him, If thou 
Okay, no, let, let us read from sort of God how and understand where it's coming from. Uh, let's start from 20. That's 20, okay. 20 and they... Or, 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 not 18, 18. That's 18. And whensoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth a nation with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 19. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed for me. And he, and he answered his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. Verse 22. And oft times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe them. Can we repeat that word? If I can believe. If I can believe. All things are possible. All, all things, things are, are possible. possible. For me, because I believe. For me. If only I can believe. All things are possible because I believe. Hallelujah. It is possible. Those things that you think are so difficult, are so impossible, you are the one labeling them as impossible. Bible says with God, all things are possible. And you have been created and made in the image of God. And the Bible says that ye are gods. So with you, if you have that, if you equip yourself with that mindset, you can tell yourself, truly, I've been made in the image of God. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible for them that believe it. I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's go for that. Verse 24. Verse 24. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Praise God. Does this make sense to you? Somebody came to Jesus. He said, Lord, I believe. <clears throat> I believe. But help my This is somebody who came to Jesus. Okay, I want to ask you, what did he believe and what did he not believe? What was the belief he had and what was the unbelief that was in him? He believed that Jesus had the power, but he doesn't believe that that sickness can go. Praise God. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He died for you on the cross of Calvary. But you don't believe that he can help your marriage. You believe that Jesus is with you, but he cannot give you a husband. He cannot give you a wife. Or you are going through a sickness, he cannot take it away. You see, as a man thinketh. So it's what you see, what is going on is a function of what is within. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Most people believe Jesus died for me. Jesus paid the price for me on the cross of Calvary. But I'm still struggling with believing that I've been forgiven. Is that true? How many of us sometimes you still feel guilty? You still feel like, I told you, Jesus, if I said to people, now start praying, close your eyes and start praying. You hear people say, Jesus, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> remember the blood of the cross of Calvary. Remember this. It has been done. You have been forgiven and it's been cleaned. So you believe he died for you on the cross of Calvary and he washed your sins. But you are still trying to clean what has been washed. It's not like you, you take um, a bleach to clean something. And after the thing is clean, you are still using your hand. Are you not insulting the maker of the, of the bleach? If your hand could do it, why didn't you do it first? Jesus, we believe he died for you. 
You believe it. If when you start praying now, you'll be hearing, Holy Ghost, come down. Holy Ghost, come and dwell in my heart. Jesus, come and dwell in my heart. You hear people pray some prayer. Where is Jesus dwelling already? It's there already. What is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong? You say something else, you do, you do, do something else. If Jesus is living here, speak as if you know and you are sure he's there. In your prayer life, you see, when you, when you go to prayer meetings and you hear people pray, sometimes I told myself, I said, please mind your business. Because sometimes I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to, what is this saying? What is this saying? And I said, ah, what's going on? Don't people understand anymore? If you believe him, if you believe him, then trust him. When you trust him, you know when you trust somebody. Now, I trust that thinking will give me, say, a phone, the phone or a shoe. And I tell him, thinking I trust you. And he knows I trust him. So suddenly I tell, I tell him, thinking I'm on my way to your house. I'm coming to take my shoe. Do you know because he knows I trust him, even if he does not want to release it? Is that what's true, sir? Absolutely. Because he is so sure that I trust him. For that reason, that on his own will make him to stand up to integrity. And say, because he trusts me, I don't want to fail him. Most people, we believe God, we believe Jesus with our mouth, but we don't trust him for our miracles. Amen. We don't trust him enough for our miracles. And that's why you start running, there's one prophet in Ibadan. He's on the mountain, you run there. There's one prophet in, in, in Cape Town. You run there. There's one prophet, uh, prophetess. You, we run elder skelter looking for people, looking for men of God, looking for prayer contractors, looking for people to pray for you. Papa, you see what those pastors were saying yesterday? That some people come to for prayer. And after praying, the Lord will use them, for instance, to prophesy to, say, Sister, sister Itel. And Sister Abit is there. And she will say, Pastor. What did God send? What of me? So she'll be putting pressure on those pastors because those pastors need to tell her something because they won't go. They have to tell her it is well with you. So that's a lie because they don't know if it's well or not. <laughs> They're just saying something. You're just prophesying something because they are prepared. They were under pressure to say something. Amen. But people are running their task. But if you have an understanding that I know whom I believe, I trust whom I believe. I know whom I believe. That with him all things are possible. I can get all things that I want as long as I believe it. I just need to believe. Come and tell yourself only believe. Only, only, only believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me show you another thing before we go to the next scripture. Have you noticed that sometimes... I look at what I asked. I believe him. <clears throat> How do I know I believe him? Maybe he says, Pastor, please, I will need your, I will need your, pop your wallet. And when I look at the wallet, assuming you know, see the way we, we play with this thing. I look at the wallet, I see that it's just 30 euro, 40 euro there. I say, you want my wallet to take? But imagine if I have one million inside my wallet. And he comes and says, Pastor, can I have your wallet? Can I believe him with that? You know the first thing that would come to your mind? This guy, what if he, does he have a passport in his pocket? He might, he might disappear with one million. Because something, you have a level, we say to, to yourself, God, that God can help me collect my status in the country. Yeah? But then you believe him for that. But when it comes to something bigger, Maybe you are going through a tougher situation. Hmm. That's a mess you God, your beliefs have to shake. Because you have, your beliefs is in great. Your beliefs is in great. There are things you can eat. If somebody have a dip now, Father in Jesus' name, please let this headache go. Many people can believe God for a dip to go. Is that not true? Amen. But what if you have a terminal sickness? Cancer. But you have cancer. Yeah. Or you have something big. Can you believe God for it? You have some money in your pocket, you say, I believe. What if you don't have shishi? 
Can you believe? Sorry, I just want to ask you a question. You talk about uh, people go from one place to another to look for a man of God. That is true. And the uh, Bible says, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Amen. For example, we do mentorship now. We want people to come. So also other people, they have some function. They want people to come, mm -hmm. to listen, mm -hmm. not to go there to lay hand or to prophesize, mm -hmm. but to listen, because they get something that you can grab from something, from the word of God that come out from that somebody. Very good, now let me put it this way. Um, <clears throat> the family mentor is not a, is not a church thing. It's a, it's, it's, most of the things we talk in family mentor cannot be preached and explained in the church. Okay? But if it's the word of God, every church, every man of God has the word of God. The problem is not the man. If the problem is not the word of God. The word of God is the same. It's like one school, another school. One primary school, another primary school. Another. They are the same. They are one spa, another spa. They are the same. Central, another central. They are the same. Okay, the problem is now the management or the person who's handling it, what the person, how he packages it, is the problem. But if it's a, I have a problem, I'm looking for a miracle, and I run to this person, I run to that person, I go to that person, I go to that person, I go to that person, what happens is like, you are hungry, you want to eat. You go to KFC, you go to McDonald's, you go to Burger King, you go to the Rocket. If you have food poison, where would you go and say you got it from? You cannot identify the problem. So sometimes it brings confusion to the mind because you go to this person, he says something. You go to that person, you hear something. You go to that person, you hear something. And those things look as if it's a conflict. And then your mind becomes confused. But you, you said something last time that uh, when you hear the word from the man of God, you go to the Bible and verify. Very good. But 99% people don't even read the Bible. They only hear what the man of God says. They don't give themselves a time to go and sit down and search the scriptures. So that's why it's more dangerous. I, I think, like I tell people, it is better you bury your mind in your scriptures. Find time to study. Amen. I'm telling you, if you don't study, you won't get anything. Spend quality time studying the word of God. It doesn't cost you anything. If you can watch film, if you can read um, magazines, novels, what is costing, what will it cost you to study the word of God? What will it cost you? So it's important for you to study. Study to show yourself what? Approved. Christians don't study. I can tell some people to be honest, sincerely, from your heart. Is there anybody you are in this? Don't, don't forget that nobody's competing with you. For the past one week, you have not even opened a Bible. Be honest. Be honest. You see, thank you. There are people. It's all. It's, no, it's okay. And I know some people. You are raising your hand, but your hand is like this. <laughs> one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Some people have not even read their Bible for two months, for five months. What are you saying? I said for one year. Sir. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's not the way to, to walk with God. All right, so let's go further. I think we'll stop in verse, verse 24. I believe. Okay, go to Mark, Mark, Mark 11. Mark 11, 23. Yeah. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, without removed, Without cast into the sea, he shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Okay, let's hold on there. I want you to understand the power. You see, I've seen, let me tell you one thing. I know some people who are men of God who for some time they've not been studying the Bible, but they walk in miracles. They walk in signs and wonders. People will think that they are using something. 
They are not using anything. They are doing raw miracles. Amen. And how are they doing it? Taking it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we want to thank you for those that are able to give, my God. Lord, we are also praying for Father for those that are unable to give. Daddy, we know, God, that nobody comes into your presence and go back the, the same way they have come. Daddy, you are a gracious God. Lord, we ask for God that by this time next week, oh God, Father, give them more abundantly above they have expected in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for God that as we gather here again, my Father, let none of us be without a seed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we also pray, oh God, for those that are expecting miracles, oh God, financially. Father. 